Hi everybody, thanks for watching us again. We're brewing the Three Zombies IPA today. Um, first thing we gotta do is steep some grains. Um, we gotta steep some Crystal Malt 60 and some Munich Malt and some Two Row Pale Malt. And we're gonna add all of the Two Row and then just half of the packages of the other two into one sack. Or I guess you could split it up if you wanted to, but we're just going to use it. If you don't have a really deep pot, you should split it up. room as possible in this bag. So tie the knot up as high as you possibly can. There's a lot of greens in there. And our water is already ready to go. It's about 162 degrees so it's perfect for this. We'll set that in there. Really let it all Saturate all our grains here. Set it on its side if you have to. So then I got my heat set to low here. I'm going to take our lid and just set it on there. Set a timer for 45 minutes, and we're going to come back and do the rest. We'll add some hops. It's been 45 minutes. Um, this has been steeping the whole time. I've been checking it, maintaining the temperature. Um, it smells really good. This is the Three Zombies IPA. We've done this one a few times now. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this grain sack out and we're going to dump hot water on it to uh, rinse it off. Just so you don't waste any flavor. You're going to add water to it at the end anyway. You want the flavor. Let it drain naturally. Don't squeeze it. And now, what we're going to do is bring this up to a boil. So we're going to turn our heat up to about a medium, medium high. And then while we're waiting for that to boil, what we're going to do is we're going to add some citra hops here. I have two packages of citra hops. Citra pellet hops, I guess. Um, we're going to add one to one muslin sack and one to another muslin sack for different timed pop additions. So, cut that over for me please. so they can move around in there. And then for these, because they're going to be sitting in the fermenter the whole time, you want to cut off the extra. So 
last night just sitting there doing nothing. Creating possible infection. We're just gonna set those off to the side for now. And also at this time what I'm going to do is I had a little packet of yeast that I had left over uh, from a previous brew. Um, you add this to the start of the boil and it will basically what it will do is it will kill this yeast off and provide nutrients for your yeast later on. So I'm just going to line that down in there now. Also remove my thermometer at this time too. And I guess we will come back when this reaches a boil so we can add some hops. Okay, my uh, liquid is boiling here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to add one hop sack right now. Just leave it in there. Let it boil for five minutes. And we will come back in five minutes when uh, it's time to add some more hops. Five minutes has gone by. We're going to add this other hop sack with just one packet in it and we're going to let that one boil for another five minutes and then we'll be right back. We've reached the end of our boil time now so what I'm going to do is add this last hop sack that has two ounces of citra hops in it. Drop that in there and then we're going to remove this from the heat gonna move it right over here you can't really see it but it's okay um, at this point sorry about that at this point what we're gonna do is we're gonna open our brewing extract which I've already done and we're gonna pour that into this pot and stir it up thoroughly so what I'm gonna do is grab a spoon and stir while she pours that is the what is that the uh, it's upside down, I think. Is southwest? It? Northwest? He opened it upside down. It says it's supposed to be. It, northwest. Northwest. I, don't know. I showed it to you and I couldn't read it. And I, now I know the, why. Where you open it is on the bottom. <laughs> on these uh, Mr. Beer cans. I have uh, Yes, I have the... Uh, another good tool to have around is uh, one of these little rubber spatulas. So you can scrape everything out of that can. You want to get everything that you possibly can. Out of the can. Because that is where um, beer? that's really where the beer, that's your beer. That's pretty much where it is right there. Unless you want it, it's like the difference between drinking like a light and something good. I'm not saying Bud Light's bad, but Bud Light's not good. Compared to a whole craft brew, it's watered down and good. You might as well just drink water. Or not drink And you really want to stir while you add this so it doesn't um, scorch on the bottom of your pan. Even though there's no heat on it, it's still pretty hot. So It's also pretty hard to do with three hop sacks in there, but you just got to kind of do your best. Really just keep it moving until you can get all the all the extract out and then um, and then focus on stirring. The pot's getting a little full so I gotta stir carefully. Champagne because it is actually uh, New Year's Day here. It's 12:30 in the morning. So happy New Year, happy New Year. to anybody that is watching. I hope this New Year 
is good to you and us as well. Nice and last year. Less social distancing, hopefully. Although I kind of like staying home. Alright, this has been stirred up pretty good. What we're gonna do now is take our fermenter, put the lid off, and I have some nice cold water here that's been sitting outside. It's nice and cold outside. I'm gonna add one gallon of cold water to the fermenter. And now we're going to add our wort to our fermenter, but first what I'm going to do before we do that I'm going to take my spoon and just scoop these hop sacks out one at a time and gently put them in here so that I don't have a splash or like plop or anything when I, when I go to pour it. When you're brewing with Mr. Beer, this is probably the hardest part, adding the wort to the fermenter. Um, you could use a funnel if you wanted to. I find it's best just to pour it right in and kind of hope for the best. And at this point, you really want to make sure everything that touches your beer is sanitized because we are past the boil at this point so boiling won't kill off any bacteria that you put into this so you want to make sure everything is um, sanitized and cleaned very well so we're going to pour this in here and we need not to spill any Again, you really want to get as much out of this pan as you possibly can. I know it seems silly, but just try to get every last drop. And then you add to the two gallon mark on the back of this. It's got, it's got lines on it, so the two yellow mark comes up to here. And it should be, if you started off with two gallons of water when you brewed, it should take just about all of your two gallons. If you gotta add a little more, then you might have to, but. You need just a little bit more. I'll just grab a pile of water right here. You can use tap water if you, if you drink your tap water, you can use it, but um, we like to use um, spray water or bottled water. Um, okay, so at this point we want to check our temperature, which we are right, our, our temperature on the front says 72 to 75 degrees which is, that's right where you want to be when you add your yeast. That's, that's perfect. That's where our, our ale yeast is going to love, love be. So at this point we're going to aerate our wort. Or our whisk. I like to use a whisk. Use whatever you want. 
Just stir it up real good. While I'm doing that, Brittany's going to get yeast packet ready. It is a Safe Ale 04, I believe. Yep. Blue package. I just wrote on it so we would know what beer it went to, but you want to keep it cool when you're stirring it. In the fridge or freeze, uh, well, I guess the fridge is probably the best. It says to keep it. Your hops, if you're storing them for a long time, you want to put them in the freezer. But yeast is best in the fridge. Now that that's nice and aerated, we can add our yeast. Which is also called pitching. Pitching your yeast. And like, I don't like to dump it in in just like one big like thing. I like to let it spread out and the bubbles will like disperse it across the top. And you're almost making like a smooth little yeast raft. So then they can all be even and all do their own thing. Instead of being a giant ball of a yeasty conglomerate in the fermenter. And with that, our beer is all done. We put the lid on. And you want to keep that lid on until you're ready to bottle it, pretty much. Until we're, all, until we're ready to dry hop. And now what we're going to do here is I'm going to take my um, Mr. Beer Hydrometer and I'm going to check our specific gravity. Reads about a 1051, 1052, which I believe is pretty close to where we want to be starting off for this original gravity for this beer. Um, other than that, this is uh, done for now. We're going to put it in our uh, fermenting closet for um, 21 days. At 16 days, we're going to add one more package of Citra hops. And um, we'll bottle it after cold crashing it for a couple days. And um, it's going to be a great beer. Like I said, we've already, this is our third or fourth time brewing this one. So it's, it's, a it's, been, it's been great every time. So. <laughs> Uh, thanks for watching, everybody, and see you next time. Happy New Year. Cheers. Happy New Year.